Hey and welcome back to another video and in this video we're going to take a look at Codable again but with more advanced examples. We'll be building on top of the last video which is part of the Swift UI iOS take home test course and in the last video we actually looked at how to use Codable in Swift to help us work with JSON. In this video I'm going to go over some more examples of when you're not working with straightforward JSON like we did in the last video so let's get straight into it. So the first thing I want to look into is just nested objects. So a valid data type in JSON is actually an object. So it's actually possible to have another object as a value within a key. So in our JSON, let's actually change it where our occupation actually is not a string and instead it's an object that tells us the title, occupation, and also as well if the person is still employed there. So we actually go back into our JSON. This time we'll actually take off this string and instead we'll use the curly braces like so and then within the curly braces we'll add those new properties so the first one that we want to add in here is name and then in here we'll just copy that where it was before where it said content creator and then now we'll say is active and then we'll set this to true and then within this occupation here we'll set the name and we'll set this to be again ice cream man and then we'll set this is active to be true as well oh, actually to switch it up yeah we'll say true cool 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 all right now to make sure that this is valid let's just do what we did in our previous video where we actually ran this through a validator And as you can see, it says here that the JSON is valid. So now if we go back into our playground and run this, you should realize that this should actually fail. And the reason why it's going to fail is because it's telling us here that the it cannot, you know, it can't map uh, occupation because it's not a string anymore. It's an object now. So what we need to do is we need to resolve this by actually updating our model. So how can we fix this? Well, we need to actually create another model for our JSON to map to and use this as our type for occupation. So let's actually do this now. So what we want to do is we just get these up side by side. So what we actually want to do here now is we want to actually create an object that matches this occupation. So underneath user, let's create a new object called occupation. Mark it with codable. Now we want this to match. So let's just create a constant called name string and then we'll create another constant called is active. But this time it will be a bool. So in order to actually, you know, simulate this within our Swift, all we need to do is just basically change the type of our occupation to be this new struct that we have here. So rather than it being a string, this should actually be occupation like so. Let's actually just take this out so we get more space. And let's actually just run this. And as you can see now, we actually get our model being successfully decoded, as you can see here, with the occupation objects being listed and encoded, where you can see it being printed out here within the console. So right now, our user doesn't have anything to actually uniquely identify itself with other than the username. But what about if rather than using a username to uniquely identify each user, I actually want to use an ID? Well, what we actually do is actually create a new property within our JSON to actually associate a user ID with a user. So let's actually update our JSON now. So let's go into our data. And then above our username, we're going to create a new property called user ID. and its type is going to be an integer. So we're just going to give this the value of one. And then on our second object, we're going to give this the value of two. So now let's actually update our Swift model to now you know match this JSON. So in our user, all we need to do is just simply add in that property, user ID, and then in like so. So let's hit run. And as you can see, the user ID is now being decoded and encoded. 
But this, so this actually works great. But what about if rather than me having user ID, I just wanted to rename this specifically. So this key specifically here to ID. Well, we actually can't update our JSON in a real life app since this is actually coming back from an API. So we can't manually go into the JSON file and just change, you know, this to ID because in a real world example, this would either be stored on a user's device or it will be coming back from some kind of API. So once it's in the bundle and, you know, we release our app, it's out into the wild, so we can't update it. So instead of, you know, us being restricted by this, what we can do is we actually can rename properties within our Swift models and match them to our JSON by using something called a coding key. So what this protocol allows us to do is essentially map any kind of key to our Swift model and rename it by using an enum. So let's actually do this now for our user ID. So if you go inside of your user struct, what you want to do is create an enum called coding keys. And then we need to specify a type here. So the type that you want to specify for your coding keys is string. And then we need to actually use the coding key protocol. So this is where the magic happens. Cool. So now within our coding keys, enum, what we have to do here is actually specify the name. So we need to specify the name of the property. So in this case, we want to specify that we want the name of the property to be um, ID and it needs to match it and the JSON property that it should match. So in our case, what we need to do is actually update this to be ID. And then we need to create a case that matches this called ID. And then we want to give it a string value for what property we want to map this to in our JSON data. So in our case, we want this to be user ID. So if I actually get these up side by side, what's gonna happen now is that this property here, user ID, is going to be mapped to this property here, ID, by using this case. So you need to make sure that your case property matches the property within your struct and you tell it what key you want to use from within your JSON for this to work. So now what we need to do is actually specify this for the rest of our properties within our struts because if we just leave this, it isn't going to work. So let's just say case username and then case occupation. Now you may be wondering for username and occupation, why didn't I, um, you know, do this? Well, because we've actually specified the enum is going to be of type string, what happens is it automatically gets the value, the raw value from this case and actually maps it to our JSON. Now, if you look at username here, the raw value for this username would be the username, but a string, and that maps to this. And then likewise, the raw value of occupation would be occupation. So the only time you really need to specify a string value for one of your cases is if the key doesn't map the same spelling as your JSON, as you can see here, where you've got user ID in our JSON, but within our struct object here, we just have ID. So now, so now let's actually just run this and see what happens. So let's close this and I'm just gonna run it. And as you can see, we now have our JSON being mapped to the ID property within our console, which is great. So I actually want to associate some more data with our user. So I want to give them a first and a last name for both our users. So let's go into our JSON. And then let's actually just give them both a first and a last name. So when you're actually creating properties that have, you know, a space between them, first name can be two words. So rather than having a space as a key, you're actually meant to use a underscore and in JSON or just actually well in programming in general this is called snake casing so let's actually do this now so as you can see we've done this all in lowercase and we separated out the words by using a underscore like I said before by using snake casing so let's actually just copy this and then let's actually just paste this within our linter to make sure that this is all right and you can see that it is valid JSON so now what we want to do is we actually now want to add in our new properties to our model in Swift. So let's go into our user model and then let's actually just add in two new properties 
for first and last name. And because we've added in two new properties, we actually need to update our coding keys to include these two new properties as well. So let's do that now. So let's actually just run this and see what happens. And as you can see, we can now see our first and last name being included within our user when it's decoded and encoded. But we actually have a bit of a problem here. So in the Swift style guidelines, when you're actually, you know, writing properties where, you know, the words have spaces, you're not actually meant to use snake casing like this. You're actually meant to use something called camel casing. And what camel casing is, is it's essentially where rather you having an underscore between words, you actually just uppercase the next word like so. Cool. So now this actually matches the Swift style guidelines. We actually have a problem now because we actually have a different, you know, property to our JSON model. Now what we could do if we wanted to is we could use the similar technique here where we specify, you know, first underscore name and map it to that property and last underscore name to map it to that property. But instead, all we're actually able to do with our encoders is we can actually tell it to convert it to and from snake casing. So in our JSON encoder, if you actually scroll down, if you go to your decoder, you'll notice that there is something called a key decoding strategy. So what this allows you to do, if you just hit equals and hit dot, you'll see that you'll have an option here called convert from snake case. So what this will do is it'll actually convert our JSON where it's snake case like this into camel case for us automatically. And then what we can do in our encoder is actually turn our camel case back to snake case by just doing a similar thing. So on our encoder, we can say key coding strategy and then we can say convert to snake case. So this will actually handle it for us automatically and we don't need to specify additional mapping keys in our coding keys for us. So now let's actually run this and see what happens. Cool, and as you can see, this now all works because when it's decoded, we can see our first and last name camel case. And when it's encoded, if you actually look at it very carefully, you'll see here that our last name is actually also snake cased and our first name is also snake cased as well, which is great. So one more thing that I wanna do is actually give our user a date. So we can actually let Codable handle converting date strings into date objects for us. Okay, cool. So now we've got that in. Let's just actually add this into our model. So within here, let's create a new constant called date of birth. And it's going to be of type date, like so. And then now we need to actually add this key to our coding case, like so. Cool. And then what should happen now is that you'll realize that we actually didn't use string here, we actually used date. And the reason why we use date is because we're actually able to tell the encoder and decoder to automatically handle strings and convert it into a date for us. Now in order to do that, we need to set the date decoding strategy on both the decoder and the encoder. So let's set that now. So we set that format on both the decoder and the encoder. So as you can see, this is the reason why I was saying that we actually want this, we actually want to use this format as a standard because we actually get this for free within you know, Swift. So let's actually run this and see what happens. And as you can see now, we can see our date of birth here in our object and within our optional, so within our, you know, data that we're actually going to send off that we use within the encoder, you can see the date of birth is actually set back to the string which represents the date. So this is how you can easily handle dates when working with JSON. So one final thing that I wanna do and just show you is how to handle data that may not exist within your JSON. So let's go back into our data here 
and then what we're going to do is we're actually going to remove the occupation for our second user like so so now our second user actually doesn't have an occupation so let's go into our playground and just see what happens so if we just run this you should see that we actually get an error because it's telling us that it expects an occupation but it doesn't actually exist anymore so how can we fix this well in cases where you work with an api where some data may be sent and some data may not be sent so for example you may have an occupation on one user and it may not exist at all on a second user what we can actually do to just simply resolve this is just by marking our property as optional so what this will do is this will actually set the value to nil if it doesn't exist and if it does exist then it will just be a value that you have to optionally unwrap so now let's run this again and as you can see we now get our data but when we actually look at our second user you can see here that the occupation is nil so that's how you can handle that scenario so that's everything in this video if you enjoyed this video, I'd love to hear your feedback in the comment section below. Hopefully you learned a lot more about how to handle different cases of JSON when working with Swift. Also as well, if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get updates for whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.